What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we had a relatively mixed bag in the stock market with the small caps and the tech sector leading the way, but we did see a little bit of lag in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so today on SPY, we did go down 0.1% but we still see SPY closing above a positive sloping 5 EMA, and we still have the full bull trend with all of the moving averages stacked to the bull side. Now do note that the 20 simple moving average is still relatively flat, and we haven't yet seen SPY's 20 simple moving average curl back up and go into a positive slope. However, there's no doubt looking at this chart that the price action and the trend on SPY are definitely bullish, and we are coming into that previous resistance level right around the all-time highs at 423. Now, as soon as SPY does get a closing price over 423, we will be looking towards our next price targets above right around 425. We have a price target at 425, and if we get a close above that, we'll be looking for the next price target around SPY levels of 430. Now, don't forget, coming into the middle of June, we still have a lot of risk with the CPI data coming out this week and the FOMC meeting. However, if you're just staying objective and you block out the noise, the price action and the trend are bullish. However, it would be very wise to at least have some sort of cash position just in case we do see volatility going into these events. It's always better to be prepared for the worst and hope for the best than it is to get caught off guard. So do understand as we continue to go towards new all-time highs, risk does increase the higher we go. So you don't want to be taking on too much risk as the stock market goes higher. So plan accordingly and make sure that you're protecting yourself to the downside. Right now, I would watch to the downside support levels at 420. If we start getting price action closing below 420, now you're looking for that critical support level at that 20 simple moving average, which is still sitting right around 416 to 417. That level is the critical support, and if SPY does start closing below the 20 simple moving average, we will know that we are likely rolling over and we're getting ready to go much lower. But right now, as long as we're trading above the 20 simple moving average and we continue to see the bullish trend, we are pushing towards new all-time highs and we're still looking for a price action close above 423. So SPY is looking bullish until we get a price action close below this 20 simple and we will know a warning sign would be a close below 420. Don't forget we still do have gaps below at 411 and $400 and we do know that gaps typically get filled. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So that's why you still want to protect yourself to the downside because we could easily go back to SPY levels of 400 if we get bad news going into the middle of June. Remember, the stock market can take the elevator down and we could drop very quickly, very fast. And that's why you want to know these critical support levels to give you an early warning sign that the stock market is likely rolling over. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we had a bullish day today going up 0.3%, which isn't that much of a surprise because on Friday, we did get that bullish breakout above 334.6. Today, we saw 334.6 acting as support. And that is always a bullish indication when you break a resistance level and then backtest that resistance level as a support level. So we saw a very bullish breakthrough on Friday, and then we did retest that breakthrough as support today, and that was how you knew that we were having a bullish day and that you could actually trade to the long side on the triple Qs. Now we see the NASDAQ 100 going up to our next resistance level in the high 336s, and if we break above that level, we'll be looking for the triple Qs levels of 339. Now 339 is going to be a very strong resistance. So if the triple Qs blast right through 339, that is going to be an extremely bullish price action breakthrough. In that instance, we would definitely be looking for a retest of previous all-time highs around 342. The next price targets on the triple Qs above 339 would be in the mid 340s and the low 350s, but I don't want you looking ahead because we still need to break through 339 before we worry about an all-time high. Again, 339 will be the strongest resistance level and that would be a great place to lock in a lot of profits if you are trading to the long side. So your critical downside support levels on the triple Qs are now going to be 334.6, 332.5, and that 20 simple moving average, which is going to be right around 329. Note that all of the moving averages are bullish on the triple Qs and they're all positive sloping, but we don't yet have the 20 simple moving average crossing back above the 50 EMA. That's not a big deal, but it is something to note and by the time it does cross back above the 50 EMA, we could already be at all-time highs. So I wouldn't worry too much about it, but that's definitely going to be the most critical support level down there at 329. If the triple Qs did break below 329, I would definitely be looking for the gap fills below at 323, and then the next gap will fill right around 315. Remember, these gaps don't have to get filled anytime soon, 
but they are very likely going to get filled. It's just a matter of when. So pay attention to those gaps and understand those are where you want to define the risk to the downside because it is possible if we get bad news, we're taking the elevator down and we're closing those gaps. On the Dow Jones, we dropped 0.38% today and the Dow Jones did close right on top of the 5 EMA. Remember on the Dow Jones, all of the moving averages are stacked to the bull side, but we do see the 20 simple moving average negatively sloping. That's not a huge deal, but it is something to note because it does look like the Dow Jones is losing some momentum here and it might be calming down and maybe trading sideways or possibly trading down in the near future. On the Dow Jones, we have upside resistance at 348. And if we break and close over 348, we're looking for a retest of the previous all time high at 350. The most critical downside support on the Dow Jones is going to be right around 343.75. And a break below that would be considered bearish. And we would likely retest the 50 EMA around 339. On the Russell 2000, we had a bullish day today going up 1.34%. And the Russell 2000 did break out of that resistance trendline level at 228. We got a very decisive close above it. And not only did we close above the resistance trend line, but we closed above the next resistance level at $230. So this does validate that we could be heading to new all time highs in the Russell 2000 with price targets at 233 and 237. Remember when you get a breakout like this, you typically do want to wait for a possible retest and bounce before you go long and you want to see it taking out that next high. If you don't wait for this and it just starts running away without you, don't chase it and you missed it but it's much safer when you get a breakout to wait for that confirmation test of support, and then you can trade it to the long side with a better risk reward ratio. Now, don't forget on the Russell 2000, we do have critical support levels at 227 and the gap closed below at 223.75. The 20 simple moving average is all the way down here at $222. Overall, the Russell 2000 is looking bullish and it does have all of the moving averages positive sloping, but the 20 simple moving average has not yet crossed back above the 50 EMA. Again, that's not a huge deal, but it is something to take note of. On the ARK ETF, we went up 2.9% today, and the ARK ETF did close right at that resistance level, right around 112.68. If we do break above that resistance, we're very likely going to attempt to break out of the 50 EMA, which is going to be a very strong resistance level at 114.5. ARK is starting to break out of the downside resistance trend line, which is starting to look bullish. But just like I said with the Russell 2000, a lot of the times you get these breakouts, you do want to wait for a confirmation test of support and then a bounce off support to let you know that this is the real deal breakout and we are going into a bull market. So right now, ARK is starting to look bullish, but we are still trading below a negative sloping 50 EMA and ARK is still in a bear market until it starts making higher highs. So if ARK does start closing above this critical resistance, that will be a higher high on the daily chart and that will start looking more bullish. So we need to watch ARK very closely here because if it does start breaking out bullish, we could be catching ARK into a bull run at very low levels and that could be a very profitable trade. But don't get bull trapped because it's still possible this is a false breakout and we just need a few more days of confirmation to know for sure if ARK is going bullish. Your downside support levels on ARK are 109, 106 and if we break below 106 we're very likely going to try to double bottom back off of 97 dollars on the vix we were flat on the day but we still see the vix very low trading at only 16.4 remember the vix is a measure of fear and right now we see a low vix which does imply we are going to continue to go higher to all-time highs we would need to see a spike in the vix and get back above 18.2 and then into the 20s to know that we are likely going to see a correction but right now the vix is low which means low volatility and low fear and we should continue to see the stock market drifting higher under these conditions. On gold, we had a bullish price action day closing back over the 5 EMA, and we still see gold holding on to that very strong bull trend with all of the moving averages positive sloping. Gold did bounce off that 20 simple moving average as support, and it does look ready to retest our price target above at 1923. Downside support levels for gold are going to be right at 1876. On silver, we also saw bullish price action today, trying to break out yet again above that resistance trend line right around 27.9. We are trading above the 20 simple moving average and all of the moving averages are still stacked to the bull side on silver. My price target on silver is all the way up here at $29. And as long as we continue to trade above this level at 27.8, silver will likely continue to run towards that price target. On Bitcoin, we're currently down over 5% and we do have trouble in crypto paradise. We see Bitcoin breaking out of this consolidation wedge to the downside, which does mean Bitcoin is going to continue into this bear market and continue to head lower. So right now it's very critical to be patient on Bitcoin and wait until it tests support levels at $30,000.
If support fails to hold at 30,000, you're looking for the next support level at 27,000. And if that level fails, you're looking for Bitcoin to possibly head all the way back down to 23,000 or possibly even $19,000. So right now we still see all of the moving averages are stacked to the bear side and we still see Bitcoin in a bear market and it just broke out of a consolidation wedge to the bear side. So like I keep saying, don't expect Bitcoin to start running to new all-time highs in the very near future. This chart is absolutely bearish as can be, and there's no reason to be bullish on Bitcoin until we see something changing in this chart. Remember, you don't want to do any guessing, and right now the price action and the trends in Bitcoin are implying that we're going much slower. So be patient and watch how the price action behaves at support levels of 30000 and 27000 and we'll still need to see a bounce off support and a break of resistance to start getting bullish on Bitcoin. Your critical upside resistance on Bitcoin is going to try to be a breakout of the resistance trend line, which is somewhere around thirty-seven dollars to $36,000 at these levels. On Amazon stock, we dropped about a quarter percent today, and the price action continues to head lower, trading below a negative sloping 5 EMA, with all of the moving averages looking like they want Amazon to try to go into a bear market. However, Amazon is not going into a bear market as long as it's holding up above critical support levels. So we do have some support right around this thirty-one eighty-five level, but if that level does break down, you're looking for Amazon to come back down to 3138. That should be a strong support level. So if Amazon does fail to hold up above 3138, you're looking for much lower prices. And that's not a good sign for Amazon. To the resistance side, we're looking for resistance at 3209 and the 50 EMA at 3243. Right now, Amazon just looks like it's consolidating. And I don't think there's any reason to be too concerned about this stock until we see a break below 3138. On Tesla, we went up about 1% today, and we do see Tesla closing right at 605, just above that resistance level at 594. On Friday, we did get a price action close above that resistance level, and today we did get follow through. So right now, the question is, is Tesla going to try to break back out of this resistance level at 626 and possibly retest the 50 EMA at 643? We still need to wait to see if the price action could get back above the 13 EMA and break out of 626. But it is still possible Tesla is in a bear market and it's still going down for another leg lower. So be careful on this price action because it could just be a dead cat bounce before we come back down to retest support at 546. Remember, if Tesla breaks below 546, you want to get out because it could be going back into the 400s. But remember, 546 is going to be a very strong support level and there's no guarantee that it will break down. So you need to watch the price action. We will also still have support at 594. So watch that level as well. On Apple stock, we are relatively flat on the day, but the good news is that Apple did find support intraday when it did come back down and retest the breakout. Remember, Apple was in a downward channel and we did get a breakout of that channel on Friday's price action and Apple is starting to look more bullish after this breakout. The price action is back above three of our four moving averages and we're holding up above that support level right around 126. If Apple can get back above about 127 to 128, that's when we're looking to get long on Apple and try to see if Apple can get back into a bull market. So Apple still needs to break back above the 50 EMA and prove to us that it's going back into a bull market before we try to make this trade. Right now, if you make this trade, you want to set your risk right around a close below about 123. Or if you're less risk averse, you want to close right around 125. Apple is that market moving stock. So if we do see Apple breaking out, that will be bullish for the NASDAQ 100 and the triple Qs. So watch for the critical support levels around 125 and 123 with the critical resistance breakout around 127 and 128. On the financial sector, we dropped 0.65% today and the financial sector finally did get a price action close below the 5 EMA. We still have the strong bull trend, so there's nothing to worry about, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on to see if it's going to continue to see weakness. On the industrial sector, we also dropped 0.69% today and we did close below the 5 EMA. The industrial sector is still in a bull trend, but we do need to watch this price action to see if the industrial sector is rolling over or if this is just a minor sell off before it continues to go higher. On the healthcare sector, we went up 0.36% today, but we did see the healthcare sector finding resistance and closing below a negative sloping 20 simple moving average. Remember, the healthcare sector did bounce off of the 50 EMA, but if we can't break back above the 20 simple moving average, it could mean that the healthcare sector is rolling over and it's continuing to head lower. So watch for support right here at the 50 EMA to see if it does hold up or if the healthcare sector is going to blast right through it and try to head much lower. On the energy sector, we dropped 0.43% today, but we're still trading well above the 5 EMA and we still see all of the moving averages positive sloping and stacked to the bull side. The energy sector still looks very strong at these levels. 
So jumping back over to the S&P 500, we can definitely see a little bit of weakness in some of the sectors today, but they all still have bull trends and they still do look like they could recover from today's price action and continue to go higher. We have the S&P 500 with bullish price action and a bull trend, but we definitely do have a lot of risk coming into the next couple of weeks with the CPI data and the FOMC meeting. Keep in mind that's all noise and we're staying objective and we're following the price action and the trend, which are still bullish. You either wanna be a bull in a bull market or you want to be neutral and wait until after the middle of June to decide which way this market's going to go. There's really no reasons to be bearish just yet, and even though that could change at the drop of a hat, we're staying objective and everything still looks bullish at this current time. The VIX is low, which means low fear, and the S&P 500 is knocking at new all-time highs with a bull trend and bullish price action. So stay objective in this market, and remember if you're not sure what to do, just wait it out and wait until after the middle of June, and we'll see a much clearer picture in the stock market. Also remember on the Stocks Channel Discord, I'm giving intraday updates and analysis to always help you navigate this market and always help you stay on the right side of the trade. I'm also bringing a lot of brand new trade ideas weekly, and this is a great time to be a member of the Discord server because there is a ton of trade opportunities at this time. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Discord trading community, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.